Hello, I'm Dr. Charlie Collins. Let's talk about research methods. Today I'm going to talk about the process of designing research, and I will discuss the steps of designing a research project, the subtle differences between quantitative and qualitative research projects. Before we jump into our discussion on the research process, let's use a running example of Airbnb research. Airbnb is a room sharing platform where individuals can rent out their extra rooms or even entire homes for short periods of time. So instead of staying in a hotel in Miami, I can rent a room from a local host. Airbnb has been wildly successful. However, there have been numerous reports of discrimination among hosts, ranging from the subtle to the more overt. Now that I've told you about this issue, let's say you're now interested in doing a research, doing a research project on discrimination within Airbnb. If that's the case, congratulations. You've completed the first step in the research process, selecting your research, stop, research topic. For most social science researchers, selecting a research topic is a personal decision. You should choose a topic that is interesting to you in some way, interesting enough to make it fun to do. Research projects can go on for months and even years. If you don't find it fun and interesting, it will be difficult to maintain your focus on that one particular topic. Step two in the research process is reviewing the literature and considering theory. This is the point in the research process where you bridge your personal interests in the form of a research topic with the existing research. Reviewing the literature is the place where you take the idea that is interesting to you and look at whether it's interesting to science or the scientific literature. This step informs your research in a more subtle way and may shift your research topic just slightly. For your Airbnb project, you may start by looking at the literature on the sharing economy, but you may quickly find that because the sharing economy is so new, uh, there might not be much there. So instead you focus on the issue, discrimination. Fortunately for you, there's tons and tons of research on discrimination. Using that lens, you can look at different theories, such as implicit bias theory, to inform where you go next to building your research question. Which brings us to our third step. Research questions are perhaps the most important step in this process because they're the place where your idea and your methods come together. Research questions should be interesting, focused, and manageable. What I mean by interesting is valuable to the scientific area. If you are leaning on implicit bias theories, for example, how does your research add to that theory or fill in any gaps that it may have? By focused, I mean specific. Research questions are the place where we take a large idea of discrimination on Airbnb and turn them into something specific and testable. Research questions should also come in the form of a specific question. You may ask the question, are there regional differences in discrimination against black men on Airbnb, for example? And by manageable, I'm referring to being practical in terms of time and resources. Some, researcher, some research projects can be extremely expensive and time consuming. Others can be fairly inexpensive and only take a couple of months. These are things to keep in mind when building your research question. As I mentioned, your research question informs your methods or whether you will use quantitative or qualitative methods. Quantitative research is typically deductive or builds off of theory and uses numbers as data. Qualitative is typically inductive and uses text or descriptions as data. The trick I used to remember the difference when I was first learning is that quant is short for quantitative but also for quantity, uh, which is numerical. Qual is short for qualitative, but also for quality, which is descriptive. So we have the numerical, and then we have the descriptive for the text. Quantitative and qualitative research methods employ similar steps in their process. However, I will first discuss quantitative and then qualitative. Quantitative research is typically used to examine the relationships between two or more variables and is used to examine trends in the data, not to highlight specific cases. Quantitative research questions usually take the form of, if X occurs, does Y also happen? For our Airbnb example, we may ask, does discrimination occur more frequently when the host and guest are of different races? In this case, our X is different or same race for host and guest, and our Y is discrimination. 
Quantitative research has four steps, selecting a strategy, identifying units of analysis, measuring variables, and gathering and analyzing data. We must first select a strategy or a data collection approach. We can conduct an experiment, collect survey data, or use pre-existing data. We'll talk about each of these later in the series. Second, we must identify our units of analysis. Our units of analysis are the things that, ha that have or exhibit the characteristics we are interested in researching. We can look at characteristics of individuals, groups, or even countries. For our research question above, we would be interested in pairs of people, host, and guest. Because we are interested in looking at each race between the two and whether discrimination happens between them. So for us, each pairing would be considered a single case. Third, we need to measure our variables. Variables are characteristics that change from case to case or over time in the same case. Variables are also concepts that we can measure in some form or way. For our research question, we have two variables, race congruence and discrimination. Race congruence may be an easier concept to measure. We might just have a data set that says whether the races between the host and the guest were the same or not. So a yes or no type of question. Something like discrimination may be more difficult to measure. So we may use something like whether the host rejects a guest or not as a proxy measure for discrimination. If you want to know about this, more about the subtleties of measurement, take my stats class or watch my stats videos. Finally, we need to collect and analyze our data. Once we have our data, there are specific ways to analyze it, which is beyond this discussion here. Again, take my stats class. One thing I want to talk about, though, is causation versus correlation. Causation is extraordinarily difficult to find in social science research. Typically, only very, very well-designed experimental or longitudinal research can, can specify causation. Usually, we're looking at the relationships or correlation between variables. Regardless, our analyses help us answer our research questions and help build theory around a specific concept. Qualitative questions are not designed to examine relationships between variables like quant questions are. Qualitative questions are designed to understand the meaning behind human actions and interactions. The goal is to identify the process behind a certain phenomenon. In contrast to our quantitative question about discrimination on Airbnb, a qualitative question might ask something like, why would an Airbnb host discriminate against a potential guest? While our quantitative question looks at the relationship between race and discrimination, our qualitative question seeks to understand host experiences and perceptions about their potential guests. This question may come up with many more subtle reasons why hosts may not allow certain guests to stay with them. Perhaps a host had a bad experience with a guest from Norway and now does not want to host any Norwegians. Qualitative questions require five steps. Selecting a research strategy, selecting a setting, gaining access, deciding the data source, and gathering and analyzing the data. Selecting a strategy means that we need to identify if we are to conduct field research, conduct interviews, read archival records, or something else or something mixed. For our Airbnb question, we would likely conduct interviews with hosts about their experiences hosting different types of people. Second, we need to select a setting in which to carry out our work. This may be a certain field setting, social group, and or archival records. Again, for our Airbnb question, we would likely seek out Airbnb hosts as this fits with our research questions. We could potentially use archival records in the form of guest comments, but we may have to change our research question a bit. Third, we need to gain access to our sources. This is often the most difficult component of qualitative research, especially for interview or observational methods, because we have to spend significant time with those people we are studying. We are often asking a lot from them. As such, it is important to build relationships with those individuals or groups that we are studying. Fourth, we need to identify whom and what to study. This is somewhat analogous to our unit of analysis in quantitative research. Here we are identifying the thing or people we are studying. Again, in our case, it would be Airbnb hosts. Finally, like quantitative research, we need to gather and analyze our data. However, this looks a lot different from quantitative methods. 
Qualitative methods are usually seeking rich description and looking to build theory, as opposed to measuring the relationships or examining the relationships between things. That is all I have for this discussion on the research process. By now you should be familiar with the steps of designing a research project, the subtle differences between quantitative and qualitative research projects. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Charlie Collins, and see you next time.